just a few seconds, we've gone from the preconception to when the child is two years old. That is the first 1,000 days of life. Why is this period so important? Well, it accounts for about 70, 70 percent of our future health and wellness. Much of what a pregnant woman encounters during her daily life is shared in some fashion with her fetus, and uh, the fetus incorporates these offerings into his own body and mind. Well, the events of this uh, time frame are permanently influencing the functions of our organs and uh, the rewiring of our brain. In medical terms, we call them fetal programming and neurodevelopment. Well, in a few words, it's the blueprint of our future life. The magnitude and the interactions of all of this allow really uh, something which is really fascinating, and that is the fact that what we transmit to our germ cells, that is the spermatozoa and the eggs, with our behaviors, with our lifestyles, and then transmitted to the fetus. And in many times, the fetus transmits it to its own baby and so on for three generations. In what in medical terms, we call it the transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. What is epigenetics? Well, here we have to shift the paradigm of how we see our DNA. And we go from a fixed and unchangeable program that is programming the building of our body to a DNA that is vulnerable. It is modifiable by what surrounds us, and that we call the environment. And this happens even before our parental germline fuse. What do we mean by environment? Well, the environment is uh, the air we breathe, is the water we drink, is the earth where we can grow some of our food, or is the food that we eat, or is the physical exercise that we practice, or even, uh, well, what surrounds us, or even the music we listen to. Well, all of these action are going to allow us to have an important expression on our DNA, which is based on stimuli that we have. And the stimuli coming from the outside could be positive or could be negative. And uh, the magnitude of, the, of these stimuli on our body is incredible, more intense when we are at the beginning of our life. Because our tissues, our body, is incredibly sensitive to the outside. We call it plasticity, and plasticity is highest at the beginning of life. And uh, it is incredible how simple actions can trigger positive outcomes. Think, for instance, of a nice massage. I think that each one of us, at least once in a lifetime, has had a massage. In 50 minutes, relaxing massage. Well, there is uh, an activation of what we call the parasympathetic autonomous nervous system, which in turn activates our immune system and the wiring of our brain. It is more or less as if we had four and a half hours of deep, profound sleep. Usually, sleep third phase is one hour and a half. So it's a lot, okay? But think of the mother with the pregnant, and she has a massage. And this goes directly, the stimuli to the fetus. And the fetus is having a benefit as far as the neurodevelopment is concerned. And uh, 
maybe that in the fetus is really stressed, Loas is stressed, but what is even more fantastic is the fact that after birth, he's going to sleep better. Think if our parents had known this when we woke them up every night. <laughs> but something else, music. Everyone loves music, we just heard one. And 15 minutes of music twice a day, whatever you like, maybe Mozart or maybe Pink Floyd, at better if at 432 hertz. Well, if the mother does this during the whole of pregnancy, every day, there is a search that is demonstrating that the risk of autism is almost a zero. Not only that, but also if she sings lullabies or if she tells the story, Snow White, whatever, in a low voice to her baby in the womb. Don't you think that's fantastic? I think it is. There is, however, another environment, perhaps more profound, deeper, and that is uh, the environment of emotions. Well, mother's emotions uh, during pregnancy conditions what we call the small RNA, the macro RNA, that in turn regulate gene expressions of the fetus. And then may also be of the baby of the fetus and so on for those famous three generations. Well, they could be positive emotions. And in this case, you have a better neurodevelopment. But they could also be negative emotions. And in that case, this, like for instance, mother stress, anxiety, fear, depression, well, all of this uh, uh, may become a disaster for the neurodevelopment, may disrupt it. And the translation of this could be a permanent disorder which has names like autism, like schizophrenia, or later on in life, uh, Parkinson's disease, or even dementia. Well, all of our emotions uh, are going to uh, act upon what we call the connectome. Well, they are a most important epigenetic factor. And the connectome is, in medical terms, the white matter. No, white. But, in fact, it's the neural network. It connects the brain and the nervous system, and it is sensitive to all of our emotions. And it connects 100 billion neurons, or if you like, 300 billion synapses that link the neurons together. And uh, as I said, all of our senses are connected with the connectome. And, uh, well, there are many things that happen, and we call it interconnection. We are all interconnected. Yes, uh, I think that uh, I would like to have an experiment with you now. Try to touch your neighbor's hand, okay? Do it. Don't be shy. For 30 seconds, at least. Well. A touch or a hug of 30 seconds is going to elicit an incredible hormonal response. And if it is a mother, also oxytocin. And this shapes the way for the baby in order to relate in the future to its family, its friends, and the outer world. Now you can release your hands. You can't even <laughs> imagine what really happened in your brain, what happened in your body. Well, Mother Nature, in thousands of years, or maybe million years of evolution, set up these me mechanisms to foster our social relationships upon which our modern culture is based. 
And, uh, well, I think that the instinct to connect, the human relationships, or even the magic of a touch or of a hug, well, all of these are much, much deeper than the formal behavior we have, you know, when we go to work with a jacket, with a tie, and meet people we absolutely don't care about connecting with. Well, all of this is written in our genes. It is perpetrated through our molecules. And this is expressed in our health and well-being. And I would also like to add in our happiness. Well, there is also something else which is important about our connections. And that is something that we want to call with a name, a network wellness. Well, network wellness, what does it mean? Well, it's a, a matrix, it's a real matrix of uh, interconnections that uh, are really uh, shaping all of our acts through acts that we can perform every day. Look at them. Could be physical exercise, could be nutrition, could be dance, could be vibration, whatever. But all of them put together are connecting with our neural network, with our connectome, and they are the most effective, I would say the most cost-effective, uh, anti-inflammatory system in order to defeat diseases. Especially when it's at the beginning of life, when we are more plastic, and when we can respond better to positive stimuli. Yes, this is uh, important because, you know, when we think about health, so many times we think about what? About hospitals, about how to defeat diseases, about new fantastic uh, personalized medicines, uh, costly. Well, when you think about prevention, mainly we think about what is a secondary prevention. That is, we are going to prevent breast cancer. Yeah, because we look and see if there is a small cancer. So we can do something? No, the first 1,000 days of life actually is a concept that offers us a unique opportunity, the one of prevention and of preventing diseases very, very early in life, when it is most effective. Well, a few years ago, 16 years ago, an economist who got also the Nobel Prize in 1998, he's from India. His name is Amartya Sen. And he happened to read a medical journal. And he read what David Barker, wrote about the developmental origins of health and disease. In a few words, the first 1,000 days. He was struck by it. And then he immediately wrote, while he was writing about these equalities and women, he wrote that poor prenatal experience sows the seeds of ailments that afflict adults. Fantastic. But he also added one important thing. And that is, he said, that the womb is the most promising target for prevention, both in the high, but also in the low resource countries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, this fantastic journey, I think, through preconception and the first 1,000 days of life, tells us that our health is in our hands, in our minds, but it is mainly our own responsibility. Not only 
towards uh, ourselves, but also towards uh, the social and the emotional network that we are genetically planned to be part of. Thank you.